Hey, everybody. I hope you're having a great week and all. Um, just back here again. Uh, this time around, I'm going to be working a little bit on this app that I've been working on for a little while called Scratch Champion. It's a, uh, it's a DJ app I've been working on for a couple of years now. And uh, some of the past live streams have been on a new DJ app, which is going to be open source. It's more of a general purpose one. This one's a actual DJ game. And um, today what I'm going to attempt to do is to uh, actually uh, work on some uh, a, a new screen for this game. So there are two different modes that the uh, that the game has. It has a creator mode where you're able to create <clears throat> uh, game lessons for other people, and then you have another mode that is a, uh, a mode where the person actually plays. So they can choose a lesson, they can play the game, and then they get scored on their uh, on their results. So. Uh, this already has some, uh, it already has the, the game here. So I just have one sample lesson here. I have this screen where you can play. Then, um, yeah, basically playing against all the Then once the lesson finishes, then you can load another lesson that takes you back to the lesson load screen. You can go back to your setting screen. And oh, I knew I was going to run into some sort of bug. Um, well, that was supposed to take you back to your lesson load, uh, your lesson load screen. But um, yeah, so there's still a there's still a few bugs to work out. But um, yeah, essentially, like I said. This, this app has two different modes. It has this mode, which is the, the game playing mode. And then you have a mode where you can actually record lessons for other people to play. Uh, and the general idea of the app is um, being able to imitate scratches. So I come from a DJ background, um, they, they call it turntablism, where uh, you have, um, uh, where you're able to uh, basically perform scratches and perform different DJ tricks. And the idea of this app is that another DJ would be able to record uh, their scratches um, and then you would be able to imitate those and then you get scored on your results. So the idea is that this would help you become a better scratcher um, and get more effective as, at your scratching techniques. Um, so yeah, so basically what I'm going to do today is I'm looking to implement another mode here where, or another screen that you see before this, where you would choose whether you want to create lessons or whether you want to, uh, play the lessons as a player. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing today. So going up to... Uh, our main component here. Uh, and I actually have a lot of this logic already uh, in place. I just actually have to create a component now that will actually displays it. And then I'm going to have to implement another game phase or another, um, yeah, another game state that is where you choose whether um, you want to play the game or whether you want to create lessons. So as you can see here in our main component, essentially as soon as the application kicks off, we set our look and feel, which gives us uh, the fonts that we want to use. And we have this uh, if statement here. If the application mode is, uh, is the game, then we initiate a scratch we, we create a scratch game. If uh, the application mode is creator, then 
we create a creator application. Uh, and so if we have, if we go into the application mode, <clears throat> um, app, this is a, this is a really big app. So, um, so yeah, so the reason that I don't do a lot of live streams on this application is because it's so big that it's probably, um, it, it's, it's very easy for me to get lost in here. And I wrote the majority of this stuff. Um, so um, yeah, that's the reason why I don't do a lot of live streams, but I think it's good to do live streams on this because just to show what a big application like a doll or like uh, a scratch, uh, a DJ application feels like, I mean, it's a big, it does a lot of things. It has a lot of code. So, uh, so, here, we, so here we have this, um, this application mode observer. So this is just observing whether um, where, uh, where our application mode is create to create a lesson or for a game. And then we have this, uh, what I will call a uh, screen creator. So what this does, and I could probably, I could probably go through and write this, uh, I'm sure that there's some code that could be cleaned up and written more effectively. But essentially what this does is this is the place where <clears throat> um, essentially if you have, um, like for example, we have a login screen, right? Uh, which, isn't, which isn't active at the moment. But um, when, when your screen is at login, you don't necessarily want your audio loop running, for instance, or you don't necessarily want um, a lot of the things that are happening in your main game to necessarily exist because they would be taking up a lot of resources in the background. So, uh, so essentially the idea is that we have this uh, switch statement and what it does is that it creates screens. And when it creates the screens, it also, has uh, underlying data as well that is able to, uh, that gets created as well. Uh, there's an alternative um, approach that I considered for this. Uh, so there's a great article by uh, a person that works or used to work at Ableton. His, uh, he goes by the name of Lethal Guitar, I think on Twitter, and he has a great, um, article on the use of um, stood variant uh, for um, organizing game states. And it follows the same sort of principles, uh, which are that you would be able to, which are that you, it, when you're in a certain game state, you want certain data to exist. And then when you're out of that game state, you don't want that data to uh, you want to go ahead and clear up those resources. So same sort of same sort of principles. Stub variant is a little bit more, uh, I think, strict in terms of um, being able to keep those assets um, managed during a state, and it it's supposed to help uh, manage those states maybe a little bit more cleanly, but I found the variant was quite complicated to set up. And there were some other people that were telling me that they wouldn't advise using it because there was something else that you have to use alongside it. I can't remember what it was, uh, but um, that was a little bit complicated to use and it made the code confusing. So I went for this, I went for this approach using a switch statement to tear up and set up different screens and um, states. So, um, so going back to going back to our main component, if we go back here. Um, what we see is that I'm using this to manage our uh, our game state. So, as I said, we have this this app mode, which is uh, whether the whether the application we're running is the, the creator application or the game application. And then we have this uh, this game state that where I have all of the game states. So uh, in this particular one, we have <clears throat> uh, login state, um, a setup which is your hardware setup where you have your, um, your DJ DJ mixer, 
uh, DJ Mixer and configuring that, then loading a lesson, um, playing, and then finishing. And I managed to actually, between the, um, between the creator and the actual game, I, I actually managed to uh, make sure or shoehorn where both of those, whether you're in a creator or in the game, you're actually um, using, you actually have the same sort of procedure. So uh, first thing that we'll do is we're gonna go back to our main component and we're going to look because there's going to be a place where we actually start the application and, and set the state to start. So normally it would start with um, <clears throat> log uh, login. So let's see. So you have in this app settings, and I'm just looking for where we actually have login. So if I just search that out, so that's when the login button clicks and uh, we see that if we had a login screen that essentially if, um, if the login button gets clicked, then it changes the screen to the, to the setup, to the hardware setup screen. So that's that, but I'm actually looking for where it set where it sets the hardware for the the login state. Um, and then, of course, and you can see that it's been a little while since I've actually um, looked at this uh, looked at this code. So it appears that the the game state may be set in um, <clears throat> in our scratch champion or in our scratch champion creator. So let's just take a look at um, where scratch creator is. And so here is scratch creator. And let's see if this is where login happens. So I'm just looking for where I actually set the game state. So we have game state observer. And I think it would be actually in maybe screen creator. So Yeah, so then we have yes, so that is the game state is in the game state observer. So just go into that. And so the game state observer actually holds our game state. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a, another state here. Uh, let's call this um, is, um, is choosing app mode. And then um, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create a new game state. So let me just do that. So I will call this, um, let's see, what should we call this? We can call this app. Um, um, mode or type uh, I'll call it 
choose app type. There we go. And then we go return game state is equal to game state choose choose app type. Okay, then state with an S, capital S, there we go. So now we've got this game state choose application type. Then we need to go to the screen creator and as we can see, we get we we get it complaining that we don't have choose app choose app type not handled in switch. So now we're going to need to create that. So we'll say case uh, game state choose app type, and then return new, and then. I'll call this, uh, I'm just going to create a new thing in our juice mod, in this juice module I have created for this. And um, I'll call this app type screen. And for now, I will just leave this blank because I don't know what I need to um what i need to bring in there yet and so as we can see it's saying hold on a second we don't have an app type screen in there yet that's because i haven't created it yet so in so i have a juice module that has a whole bunch of different um a whole bunch of different tools a whole bunch of different like i said there there are two different apps in this application there's this creator and there's this game and um and uh but they use a lot of the same stuff like both of them have audio players both of them have displays both of them have hardware setups so they have a lot of mutual things shared between them so those are all in this uh in this library that that i have set up uh so what i need to do is i'm going to need to <clears throat> create a new juice component in here. So let's see where let's see where we where we can put this. So the way that I currently have this is uh, in um, I have this currently categorized by state. So I have loading state, play state, setup state. So it seems to make most sense to me to to have the app type screen in a um, <clears throat> choose app type folder. So let's just go ahead and create that. So I will go into my library. I'm going to create a new folder. Um, and since this is in a module, I need to create this manually this way, uh, rather than um, rather than creating it in the producer. Uh, so I'll call this uh, app chooser. And the way and the way that I have this is classified by data and UI. So I will just start with UI. And then what I will do is I will go to my console and I'll just create some new some new source files. So I will CD into this folder. And then I can create some new source files using the command touch. Uh, and I will call this app chooser screen uh, dot cpp app chooser screen dot h and if you look in here 
we now have two new C++ source files. So there you go. So now what I need to do is I need to, uh, this is one of the quirks of the producer. So if you were in CMake, you would normally just use CMake dash, dash B builds to actually re, <coughs> rerun your build system and, um, and update your project. But since we're in the producer for this one, I just need to uh, click this button that save and open an IDE. And hopefully, uh, there we go. We have, oh, what's going on here? This is weird. Uh, so it says app chooser untitled folder. So let's just go back and look at what happened here. So app chooser UI, hmm. That. Oh yes. Okay. So there's there's an extra step that I've uh, that I haven't done yet. So maybe I'm not, I'm not sure if this if this is why this isn't working. But um, since this is in a since this is in a juice module, I now need to add the source files to uh, to this kind of master master header. Um, uh, file here. So let's see, this looks like a good sensible place to do this. So I will just, uh, let's see, just looking here at the best place to put this. So we got UI. So I will put it here. So we do include and then app chooser you i'm going to just do ui i'm not sure why it's not showing the folder and then um will be app chooser screen dot h and then we need to do this for the uh, another one that includes the cpp so let me just I want to keep these roughly in the same order. The order of these does is important. So this is after audio waveform.h. So I'll just do that. Audio waveform. So and then I will just include that here. And then See if I can just build this and see if it actually see if it actually builds. It's a little bit strange that it's just showing this. Okay. Just gonna comment this out for a moment. See if it see if it builds. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not showing that those new source files when I, when I generate. What I may need to do is build the, uh, just do a clean, maybe just close juice and reopen it. So it's a little bit, it just can be a little bit quirky like that. So, okay, so built fine. Um, let's go here. Not sure why it's doing that. Hmm. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close out of the producer, close out of Xcode, and let's see if we can just, see if this works ah there we go see it's like modem turn it did you turn your modem off and on again so there we go so here we go uh, now we're now we've created this new class it's called uh, app chooser screen so this is in a namespace that's uh, that I've called SC lib scratch champion lib 
And now we will just set up, we will create a new class. Uh, this app chooser screen. And this is going to inherit from juice uh, component. And then we will have some public and private stuff. So uh, one of the good things is that I can actually draw from some inspiration. Uh, so my I'm, the way that I'm envisioning this is that um, this would be very similar to the login screen that I've already created a while back. So let's go into the login screen and So I'm not sure where that actually is. Uh, so we're going to my screen creator. Just gonna see if it'll help. Or if I do command shift F and do login screen. Here we go. So here's my login screen. So I got that, I'll put that in one tab. I will put my App chooser screen in the other tab. And let's see. So this is um, so this is the CPP file. And let's start by just getting some uh, some assets, some assets in place because I had this really cool background. Uh, so let's just see if we can get that in there. Um, so I don't know. So I've, I've actually quite uh, thoroughly created this class. I'm actually looking for, see what we have in resized. I'm actually looking for a uh, for an asset here. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is this is what I was looking for: art, art image, and Scratch Champ logo. So I'll bring this over here. And then we're going to do, I'm just gonna try to get these roughly into the same place, see if we can get it, see if we can actually just get it to show on the screen. So let's see where we have. So let's start with art, art image. So, so it's called turntable image. So there are only three, so there's one in the constructor. So we'll create a constructor here, app chooser screen. And then here, so actually let me go back here because I wanna make sure this is private moment once. So let me do this. And then here we will include include app choose app chooser h then oh app chooser screen and 
is our keep forgetting to put screen in there. And we can do add and make visible turntable image. It's called turntable image, right? Yes. We need to put this inside the namespace sclib as well. Then we will want to have a uh, resize where we can actually set the balance for this. So I will do void resized um, for overriding a virtual function from the component class. So that's why we're classifying it as override. And then we're just going to write this up. Let's see what we've set the bounds of that to. So we got, I'm gonna bring this along with it as well, the Scrunch Champ logo. And then um, we're gonna do add and make visible scratch champ logo. Okay, so now uh, we need to go back to our screen creator and just see, first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to set the state to um, to app chooser or choose app. And then we need to actually create the screen. So there we go. So called it, called it app chooser screen. Okay. So now, um, and then here, I've got another, um, case here. So I need to, I need to account for that here. Um, choose app type. This break here. So this just allows us to, um, when it calls, then what it when it calls resize, then what it does is that it gets the state, and then it it helps catapult that to reset the appropriate screen. So now we just need to. Uh, so here we have this initialized game state. So currently, um, so currently, so I, I used to have an API set up with this. Uh, whole login screen and everything validation and and all of that but um i haven't i uh, i haven't done that in a while so that so i need to set all that up again so i've just blanked this out for the moment and now we're going to i'll just comment this out for a moment and i will call state set to game state choose app type. Okay, so now what we should see is hopefully if we've done everything right that we actually get, we should get a, a new screen with just uh, a picture of a turntable on it. Okay, so now we have uh, this. Okay, so 
looks like I haven't set uh, when I did my inheritance. I didn't set that to public. So if I go back to app chooser screen, you can see here I put juice component. It should be public juice component. And now let's build this again. See what happens. Uh, we got build build, and then um, here we go. Just some syntax stuff. Build again. Fingers crossed. We have a new application application screen. So. Here we go. Just gonna check my phone a second while this loads up. Okay, cool. So we got build succeeded, and let's see what happens. What actually turns up? Okay. Great. So. Uh, this was this was a screen that I had uh, designed a while back, and we see that we have exactly what we're looking for. Uh, so, picture of the turntable, picture of the logo, and um, and all of that, all of that looks great. Um, so now, what we want is we want to uh, create. We're going to need to create some some labels. Um, and some um, and then I guess there would be a button that would say launch or something like that. So let's do that. Once again, I think that one place that we can draw from, <laughs> draw some inspiration from would be our uh, this login screen that I created before. So um, let me actually, pull that up really quick. So I love how I can just change this and now we will just rebuild and now we should see this login screen uh, that I set up a while back. So yes. So uh, we see that we have this 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 is off center so i need to i need to correct this i probably need to i could probably take this move this over to the right make it make it in in white uh so that that would look a little bit better but we can see that uh i've actually put in quite a bit of quite a bit of work here so uh see it turns gold when you switch the fields it highlights when you go when you go to log in so i've actually putting in quite a bit of work on this. So let's go back to, uh, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this <laughs> just so I can look at it side by side with what I with, with what I currently have. So as we can see, like one little slick thing that I did was I put this silver line down down that uh, that divides it nicely. So the concept of this was that this uh, this scratch champion would look like a record cover. I haven't quite make it made it look like a record cover yet, but that's that's the general idea. Um, so yeah, so so I've screenshotted it just so I could go back to this for for some inspiration. And now let's go back to this user login. And then, so where would, so here we go. So I could actually, I'm actually just going to take all of this and just create a paint function now. Uh, juice graphics. This is once again coming from the juice component class. Uh, chooser screen paint 
Images, graphics. There we go. So now I'm just going to paste this. It's not going to. So all of this stuff is not really valid to what I uh, what I'm doing in this class, but I'm just going to comment it out for now because I think it could be, it could help help us out later. So we're filling the back with dark tone color, setting it to light light tone color. Then I'm. Um, Filling some rectangles. So I'm just going to log this comment. Comment that line out as well. And then I will just build this again, see what we got. Big shout out to Nico in the chat. He's been, uh, if you're familiar with the audio program or website, he's been the person that's uh, been responsible for building that. So uh, thanks for your hard work on that. And all right, so we should see soon what's uh, what's happening with this, um, with this app choosing screen here. So this is the only thing about these big apps is that they take quite a long time to actually build. But unlike unlike other uh, other live streams, I actually haven't I haven't really got stuck. Uh, I haven't really got stuck yet today. So just waiting for it to show up here. Ah, here it is. So yeah, so we can see mm, there's a little bit of, I'm not sure. Oh, this is showing up. Um, we can see that this, this at the top is showing up. That's not, I don't want that. Not sure why that's happening. Hmm. Yeah, I need to look into that. Strange that that just happened as well. Um, okay, that's all right though. Um, so, um, so that, so that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll fix the other, the problem of that other component showing up a little bit later, but for now I'm, I'm anxious to kind of move on. So let's take a look at what else we can steal from the login. Um, so we have this, this login button. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to go and grab that. And then um, we can make that nice and big. So let's just look at the positions that we've set for that login button. So Gonna grab all of this stuff, bring it into our new class. We need to add and make it visible. Okay, so we also have um, 
some logic here that applies for um, that apply all of that applies for logging in, but you know our logic isn't going to need to be nearly as complicated for this. So I can just. Delete that actually. So I'll define what needs to happen in here a little bit later. We don't have, um, I don't have a button listener coming into this yet. So I'll just keep that blank. So right now we're just trying to get the elements to show up properly on the screen. Um, we'll need to eventually remove this. So I'll set up a, a destructor now. And user screen. That means I need to add it in here. Um, then we're going to need to set a position of it somewhere. So I'm just going to copy this. Oh, actually, it's here. So I can just pull this out of here. This is just some, uh, I think this is just some highlight, highlight stuff that I did. I'll, I'll come back to it later. And then I've got a position I've created. So we'll do that here. Let's just build this again, see what we got. See what we got now. So I'm very curious to, I must have changed something. that got that component showing up wrongly. So let's see. Ah, here we go. So we see that there's a, there was a thing in my application where, so you'll see here when it builds that you'll see the top panel. Uh, so in my logic before, the only state that, that, that I didn't need the top panel visible was logging in. Um, but now there are two there are two states where I don't need that top panel, which is um, log in and um, choosing choosing app type. So okay, so now we see that we have a couple undeclared um, undeclared variables. No big deal there. Uh, we haven't implemented a button listener yet. Um, also, we don't have this login in progress yet, so I'm just going to blank that out. So let's just go back here to our login and go 
to background color. So where is this declared from? Aha, so looks like I am looks like I am using yes a uh, a special look and feel just for this this element okay so what I will do what I will do for now uh, classic classic last words here is I'm just going to copy this to my for the sake of time I'm just going to choose I'm just going to copy this to my uh, app chooser screen. But uh, and I'll just call this app chooser login uh, look and feel for now because I want the same look and feel. But what I'm going to eventually want to do or very soon want to do is since these since this look and feel is exactly the same as the other look and feel i'm going to just want to put that into a mutual place where both those where both my login screen and my app chooser screen can see it and um and that it would uh, of course you'd be using both of those look and feels so now just gonna copy this now. So I'll just call this app chooser look and feel. I'm just gonna leave myself a little note to do. Um, combine this with login element. Uses okay, so I can just do that when I and now I'm just going to go and just copy all of this stuff over. Then I think I think we need to do something in the destructor as well. Set it to null pointer. Okay, so that should help get rid of some of those things like background color, things like that. So now we're just going to try to build this and see where we're at. So going back to my app chooser screen. Oh, no, not app chooser screen, sorry. Um, back to my screen creator here in, are you able to do wars uh, state? is uh, uh so we need is choosing app mode choosing app mode okay so let's see if that actually helps clean up our component problem as well <laughs> See what else can we do while um, so I have a pretty uh, complicated workflow for button listening for uh, or, or state changing that I intend to clean up 
at some point uh, in my main component. So the way that I have this set up, which I don't, I don't think it's necessarily ideal, is um, that I have all of these. Let's go down here. So I have all of these um, login button clicked, select lesson button clicked, load button clicked, and so on. So, okay. So just a small little fix in there. Um, Yeah, so I have all these button clicks, click actions happening in this main component. I think that they're so, and then what I do is I used, I override button clicked to in here. I'm curious to see if there's a, a better way of handling this. Um, but for now, I'm going to do it like this, same sort of thing. I'm going to do it like this, and um, and then I will come back and I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up a little bit later. Uh, but I just don't want to. I don't want to break it just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this function. Oh, I'll copy this as well. So that makes it look nice and clean. And all this launch app button clicked. And then just going to comment this out. Uh, and I will just copy this, put this in my header. So void. So this is the logic that will enable us to um, to launch, and when we click the launch uh, launch app button, then this this is eventually what will uh, follow up to the main component and tell it this button's been clicked and tell the screen creator to change the screen to login or change it to setup or whatever we want to change it, whatever we want to change it to. So just waiting for this to, to finish building. In the meantime, I can just, so we got this screen creator, get login screen. So if, let's just, yeah, so, what this is doing is it's um, seeing if the if the current screen so the current screen is going to be a component and if we can dynamically cast it as a login screen then um, then this then basically what it'll do is it'll it'll return that we have the login screen and it'll validate that we can do login screen actions okay app user screen we see that we still have a problem with background color okay so let me uh go back here and see what's going on so background color ah here we go so we got this and i'll just pop this in here now
So now let's go back to this. What screen am I looking for here? So let's go back to screen creator. And I'm going to create a new function. Um, this will be uh, choose app screen, get uh, Actually, I'll call this, um, sometimes I'm choosing, so this is actually called app chooser screen. Get app chooser screen. I think these should be const. Uh, yeah, they are const. Okay. And what I can do is I can just create this right here. This will be app chooser screen. And then SC lib. App chooser screen. Then in my main component, I can say if um, auto app chooser equals screen creator get app chooser screen. And um, app chooser is not equal to null pointer. Ah, cool. We got build succeeded. We can see these build times are taking a long, long time. Okay, cool. So this this is not bad. This is not bad. Uh, so we see that we have this login button. I would like it to probably extend over to here. Um, you know, either that or put it or put it center, put it in the center of of this. Um, maybe make it. Maybe I'll make it extra long, and it should say launch. Problem with making it extra long is that you would want launch to say you would want the font to be a lot bigger. Um, so let's just take a look at what we got. So uh, I'm just going to get some logic in here. Um, so if button is equal to um, app chooser get launch button. This is all stuff that doesn't really exist yet. Um, so then we will do state. We'll set the state to game state um, setup. And then we're going to call screen creator screen changed. Then what that will do is that will then tear down everything from the app chooser screen and then set up the screen, um, the uh, the setup screen. And then else, and if all of that fails, then we want um, we want the app to call to complain and say something's wrong. Okay, so
let's see here. So, and then I want to put this in my button clicked. So, what have I called it again? Launch app button clicked. Launch app button clicked. Okay, and then I'll just leave it still in app chooser. Okay, so um, one of the problems with the text button class is that um, if I remember correctly, that changing the size of the font is actually a real pain in the butt. Um, let's see if I actually ever wrote that in look and feel. So here I'm drawing the button background. Looks like I don't have anything that actually changes the size of the font, but I need, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I need to do something similar um, to actually, uh, to actually set that up. So, um, Okay, I need to go. I need to go soon, but let's see if we can do one more thing. So, um, I need to do a need to go to the Juice API, and then. I need some uh, radio buttons. Um, how, what are those called? Um, what's the class for that? Radio button. So toggle, so we got toggle button here. Great. So we got toggle. So we just need to create some, uh, some toggle buttons and then I thought there was something like a radio group or something like that. Um, do I remember that correctly? I suppose that it could be a combo box. You know, maybe you just have a big old combo box that no, it doesn't necessarily need to be a radio a radio uh, group. What would look? I think I actually think that the radio group is better. The radio button is better. Yeah, for idea. Yeah, I think it would maybe look better like that. Okay, 
let's just set let's just set that up and see what that looks like. So we will do change this to launch. Choose toggle button. I'll call this um, create um, create lesson. Um, I'll call this creator button. Let's see what the constructor for this looks like. So we need toggle button. So the button text. Call this uh, create create new lessons. Actually, there are, there are actually three modes that this that this app, app actually has. Do I deal with that now or no? I'll I'll put it in there now. Uh, so we got creator button. Uh, I have another mode that's like a jam, a jam, uh, just just jamming, just freestyling. Um, that's a mode as well. Um, now I'll just worry about the. I'll I'll just worry about the. Uh, the two modes for now. So we've got creator button and we've got I'll call this game button. Uh, play scratch champion. Then we will do game button and login button. Add and make visible game button. Add and Add and make visible. I'll call this game mode button. That makes it better. Creator mode button. And then so we have this login button. So I'm, I love set bounds relative. Set bounds relative is, is awesome. I love it because you can just extend and, and um, you can resize the UI and it always stays in proportion. There are some setbacks to it. Um, one of which is that sometimes I like to do stuff in paint, uh, but you can't do bound, relative bound stuff in paint, um, which is unfortunate. So it'd be nice if you could just do everything relative, but it doesn't um, doesn't work that way. So we got creator mode button. Set bounds relative. And let's see, we will start this. Is this what I want? I don't actually, I think I want a label. 
actually. I want to label with a little with a little tick next to it or a little little dot. I don't want an actual button. So I just want this on the left. So Okay, so that looks that looks like it all. Let's just see what shows up first. Um, so we will do zero point six two. Um, so if this is zero point zero five in height, I'll make it the same height, but. Let's go down, I don't know, let's, let's say 0 0.45 and we'll just make, I'm just, uh, I actually just wanna see what shows up here. Game mode. Button set bounds relative. Let's put this to the same place 0 0.62, 0 0.35, 0 0.7, 0 0.05. Let's just see what shows up. It's gonna have the default look and feel and everything, but I'm just actually, okay. So no member name get launch. Okay, so I haven't, I haven't set up all of this yet. So I just need to comment that out for now. And then I will wrap up for the day. Okay, so oh, this needs to be a app chooser screen. Okay. Hopefully this will work. Okay, looking good so far. this is happening, I'm going to go back into, just going to look further at what I need. So am I going to need it to be a button listener and a change listener? So actually, I think it would be a button listener that I'm looking, that I need to do to pop in there. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens.
us doing that. I'm just going to. Okay, here we go. All right, cool. So, I mean, that's okay. That's okay for now. I just need to put this. So there are a couple, there are a couple steps here that I need to do now. I need to, of course, make this bigger. I need to get it in the right look and feel. I need to make it where you can only toggle one of these at a time. These check, these check marks are not what I want. I want it to be more like circular. So I need to do that. Uh, and I need to, um, <clears throat> I need to actually make it where when I click on launch, it actually launches into the right into the right mode. So I'm stretching it here, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna make one more one more goal here. So um what I'm gonna do. Ah, oh, I see. So, but one second. Just someone. Okay. So. Um, just checking one thing here. Just seeing why I was using a change listener there. Okay, so let me go back to my screen creator, not my screen creator, my actual app mode chooser. Now I'm just going to pop this in as kind of a stretch goal, which is going to be um, trying to get the button listener to uh, do I actually? I don't think that I need a button listener. I'm not sure why I need a button listener. I need. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. I do. I do need a button listener actually in this situation. Um, let me see, uh, choose your screen. Just wanna see how I've handled this in here. So what I need to do is I need to pop this listener in here and then I want to say login or log button add listener and pop that in there. And then I need to create a reference so I can actually remove it as a listener as well. Um, right? Did I remember that right? So. Yes.
now I will go in here. Then we've got, and I just need to pass this here. Oh, look, I have it already. Okay. And then I just need to make sure in my main component, launch app button clicked. And then I need a function that returns returns my button. So I can just copy this. This in here. I'm sure there's a better way for me to do this, but I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Um, I'm just going to rename this launch. Oh, so I'll be in button. I'll be replaced with launch. Or actually, sorry, launch button. Now we got launch. Place all these with launch button. Place that, 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 that. Okay. Cool. So now we're going to build one more time and then we shall go for the day. Okay, so we got a um, so I'm returning so what am I returning? And I could do this. That doesn't. Explain why it's different here. That that should compile. I'm not sure why it's different here. because this is returning a reference as well. See, it's not returning a, it's not returning a pointer, it's returning a reference. That's strange. Okay, but build succeeded. And now hopefully this works. And if not, it just have to go into the next episode. So once I hit launch, this should launch us into the next mode. So I click launch. Boom, there it is. So it brings us to hardware setup. Awesome. So that, that works. That's some good progress for today. Um, great. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and uh, watching that whirlwind 
uh, live session. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see y'all next time.